I'm in Missouri, and it is 7.59 a.m. So you're probably wondering why I'm in Missouri. If you had to guess, you're probably thinking interventional radiology or helicopters, because my life revolves around both. So it's helicopters. I'm here for something called an annual flight review. It looks like I'm sort of sitting in a bathtub right now. <laughs> Smooth spots. <laughs> okay, so I'm here for something called an annual flight review, and I'm on this special insurance program that gives me a discount if I agree to do an annual flight review. So you're probably thinking, why are you in Missouri? Why did you travel all that way when probably someone in Buffalo could do it. But this goes back to about a year ago when I was at the Robinson Helicopter Factory Safety Course. Link to that video up here, actually. I talk about uh, helicopter safety. They're going around the room in the classroom and saying, okay, who are you? Most people in the room, they are actually um, professional helicopter pilots working in the industry, as you would expect. So this one guy came up to me afterwards and I just figured nobody would know what an interventional radiologist was. He said, oh, hey, um, I just see another physician in the crowd. Um, I'm an eMERGE doc. And he's like, hey, I actually uh, run a flight operation out of Missouri. If you're ever in Missouri, uh, hit me up, we'll go for a flight. I was like, oh, that's a very nice gesture. Fast forward to about seven or eight months later and I've since purchased my own aircraft. I'll link to that video up here. We were flying around with our buddies, Chris and Lizzie, and we actually got stuck at Canandaigua Lake in the Finger Lakes region in central New York. Uh, link to that video up here. I actually found a guy who could ferry the helicopter back the next day while I had to work. I was chatting with the guy, and interestingly enough, he says he did some advanced auto rotation training with this guy out of Missouri. I was like, oh, interesting. I know a helicopter pilot out of Missouri. Nah, it's probably not the same one. And I was like, it just out of curiosity, was he a physician? And he was like, uh, yeah, actually, I think he said he was an emergency room doc too. I was like, no way. So I called up my insurance company and said, hey, what are the chances that this guy, Paul Salmon, is on your register for doing annual flight reviews? And no shit, they said, oh, actually, he comes as one of our most highly regarded, highly valued uh, examiner. So I said, oh, well, I'm going to Missouri. So this story comes full circle in more than one way because weather is always a key factor in general aviation. Becky is over in Florida. I have a 24-hour window to get this flight review done. See that red dot that says IFR? Yeah, it's, it's no good. Can't fly in that. If that doesn't clear by the time today finishes, then I traveled all this way for nothing. Hopefully this weather clears. So that ceiling is 500 feet, and that is not ideal for flying. Weather here is deadly. Sorry, Chris. Here in Florida, hanging out with my fam. Haven't seen them in six months. Way too long. Can't fly in that. And this is where I play the waiting game. Sun's shining, palm trees are palming, moon is not mooning, but the sun is sunning. And we're staying. Poor old Chris is waiting for the weather to get better so he can fly. I haven't seen this lady in six months. You're in my video in your bathing suit. Hey! This is my mom. Hey! So we'll check back in with Chris, I guess. Yeah, the weather is great. <laughs> yesterday said it was going to be IFR and low IFR conditions essentially all day. Well, it's IFR right now. Um, it's supposed to clear off to marginal VFR by late morning. I'm gonna get ready to go and just hope that the weather clears. So this whole trip was not a bust. Shout out to Potato Jet, my buddy who sent me this awesome Apache shirt. I saw him wearing a video and I said, hey, where'd you get that shirt? And he said, what's your address? He sent me one, awesome guy. So, ready to go, play the waiting game. Still have our conditions out. I'm gonna go to the airport and hopefully the weather clears. So if the next scene is me at the airport flying helicopters, then you know that the weather was okay. Anyway, we'll check back in later. Still nice out. It is still nice out. Automated weather observation, 1637 Zulu. All right, so the weather's clearing off. We're gonna go grab some barbecue at a little restaurant uh, just around the way here. We're flying with Dave and Rob. Dave's a flight instructor here, Rob, one of his students. Yes, sir, one Atlantic Cape Copters. I'd like to get a special VFR to the north, northwest. And this is the first time I've ever sat in the back of a helicopter before. I've never <laughs> sat in the back. I've only, I've only sat in the front. <laughs> Actually, I've only ridden in the helicopter as a passenger in the front one time. That was with my buddy Austin Claiborne. Link to his channel up here. So do you guys go to this barbecue place often? Yeah, you know, if we're flying pretty busy, I'll try and go once a week. Nice. I like it. Around. And 
shit. Rob, you're a student right now? Or yeah, I'm working? taking helicopter lessons at Cape Copters from Paul Salmon and, and Dave. Rob flew us over here. Yeah, it was a great flight. A little confined area landing. This is a great spot. Dave's got that marked in on the GPS, so we uh, <laughs> I love it. giving it a waypoint. There's no precipitation. The radar looks clear. Uh, ceiling's still a little bit low. They were saying it was 800, but it was a lot higher than that. We snuck out under special VFR, landed at this off-airport spot for a bit of lunch. Plan is to fly back, and I'm going to work on some auto rotations and... Uh, uh, get my annual fire flight review done. All right, we're gonna get lunch and then fly back. Right, we have the package. They are still hot. They got us there in record time. <laughs> it's really good. Paul, what is this monstrosity? The M24, Magna M24. To the uninitiated, this would look like a helicopter. Yeah, it looks like a helicopter, but it's actually a gyrocopter, a gyro plane. A powered rotor on top. You've got a pusher prop that provides the thrust to move through the air. The uh, upper rotor is just in auto rotation the entire time. It spins based on the airflow up through the rotor, and that's how it produces lift. So Especially you got, got a bit of a headwind. Wind. Yeah. yeah, you can get it in the air in just a couple hundred feet. And this is a lot cheaper than a helicopter. Yeah, this is about one fourth the cost of a comparable helicopter. So this is about a hundred thousand for this one. R22 is about three hundred. So it's about one third the cost for this. Where these things really shine, maintenance costs on them are almost non-existent. I mean, you change your oil every 50 hours, they have an annual inspection, they hardly, rarely anything on them ever breaks. It only costs you about $20 an hour direct operating costs, so it's quite, quite 20 cool. bucks an hour, that's yeah. amazing. 20 bucks an hour, and that's basically just for the gas and a little bit of money thrown in there for your scheduled oil changes. Rotax engines rarely use much oil at all. I've never... I've never been in a gyrocopter before. This is a first for me. This is awesome. Is it a gyrocopter or gyroplane? Gyroplane. Gyro, gyroplane, my mistake. I'm using, I'm referencing like N64's pilot wings, that yeah. video game back in the 90s. Well, A little bit better than a normal M16. It doesn't have dual controls, but has uh, uh, some strafes on the side for extra storage. This is makes like a convertible. A more fun, yeah. It makes it a lot more fun. It's like the hidden secret of the aviation world. It's like right. Guppy versus Ferrari. So okay, let's do it. Make it from here. Hurry up on the clock, dude. I bet. I bet. I never touched anything, by the way. No? Nope. I'm good if you're good. Not a bad one to add on. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, do you get time to show me some ag turns? Yeah. If you're trying to actually get down on the crops, you're going to start off pretty slow here. Up in your collective, back down on them, up on the collective, now you're spraying. Down to here, yeah, we're going to start bringing those up. I've noticed that our speed gets down to about 40-ish or so. Now we just kind of level the aircraft, make a turn, keep the nose down in the turn here. Dump quite a bit of collective, right back down on the field, up on the collective, spraying again. Did a bunch of full down auto rotation, so basically that means just rolling the throttle off and essentially gliding in the helicopter. I did a full video on them, link up here. Them full down right to the runway and you just grind it along. <laughs> they sound kind of gross, but um, I feel a lot more comfortable with my emergency uh, landings now. I got my annual checkout, so I'm good to go so we can continue flying. I finished what I need to do here, so we're gonna send it back to Becky and see what she's doing in Florida. Bye. So we're just here in Florida waiting for Chris. He's on his way tomorrow. I look like a bag of dicks. But there's some crazy thunder and lightning happening out right now, so uh, we're gonna go check it out. Hi. Hi. Oh, I didn't know you were out here. Yeah. That's my sister. Oh, did you see the lightning? I did. I want more lightning. Do you want more lightning? Yeah. 
I'd like to see more lightning. I'd like some more lightning, please. Excuse me, Sky, please. Can I have some more lightning? That would be very cool. Nice. We're all just out here watching the thunder and lightning right now. It's crazy. Woo! It's 4.53 a.m. and I pulled my Uber app. I've never seen this before. No cars available. Anyway, I called the front desk. They gave me a number for a taxi service. I called it, someone answered the phone. Hello? Oh, this is not the taxi service? No, anyway. Somehow they called the same number and got a taxi. I think a taxi's coming. I, am, I hope a taxi's coming because I have an hour and six minutes now to get to the plane. That includes clearing security. <laughs> Wish me luck. Chris is on his way down here today, and I think uh, it's like T minus five hours until he gets here. So we'll check back in with him and see what he's up to. Made it to Chicago, close to Florida. Check back in later. Chris has uh, just boarded his flight in Chicago, so he should be here in like three hours. But I'm a little bit concerned because there's thunderstorms and it's pouring, so hopefully he gets in. Landed. T minus like 20 minutes. We made it. Palm trees, deadly. Okay, finally got my rental car and we are 16 minutes away from Becky and Fam. I think this is it. Also, the only person who wears full jackets and hoodies in Florida. So I'm always cold. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Oh my god. This guy. This fucking guy. <laughs> Damn. You missed me. I did miss you. Miss my lazy guy. Back together again. Aww. Okay, we're gonna end this here. Thank God we're back together. We're gonna have a little vacation. We're gonna relax. We're gonna hang out with family, spend time with family, spend time with each other, not do anything, and hopefully be recharged to make more of these videos for you guys when we get back. Very excited. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. What are you doing? Just sitting here like a frog on a park bench, drinking pickle juice from a mason jar. Oh, you left your bag out here. Your bag of dicks. <laughs> this is my dad. <laughs> You're the best. Missed you. Oh, missed you too. Love you.